Hei, mitä kuuluu ja tervetuloa uuden videon pariin. Mä arvoin, että tämä on aika hauska tapa harhauttaa näitä ulkomaalaisia katselijoita, joita mulla on varmaan ehkä 98 prosenttia kaikista näyttökerroista tulee muita kuin suomalaisista. Ja mä oon ollut YouTubessa kuitenkin jo nyt 11 vuotta, taitaa tulla täyteen muutaman kuukauden päästä, ja mä en yhdelläkään videolla ikinä puhun yhtään suomea, niin arvoin, että tämä on aika hauska tapa aloittaa tämä, ää, tämä video. But I think we're gonna switch to English now. Uh, don't worry, I didn't say anything bad about you. Or did I? Hmm. Only 5.5 million people will know. Anywho, um, in this video we're gonna be making a top order lure. And this is gonna be one of those walk the dog type of baits. Which is uh, probably the easiest type of uh, top water to make. Uh, besides poppers. And this is super effective and so much fun to fish with. So I think we're gonna head out to the garage now and I'm gonna show you how to make this thing. Alrighty, we're gonna start off by uh, tracing out the outlines. And this model is actually based on a glide bait that I made last summer. And just a few months ago I was looking at this um, this shape and I was like thinking to myself that you know what, this would make a really good topwater bait with just a minor few tweaks. So I made a couple of prototypes and they seemed to work really well, so I decided to go ahead with the project and uh, make some topwater baits with the same body. And um, this is going to be 18 centimeters long. The wood that I'm going to be using for this is going to be western red cedar, which is really buoyant and fairly rot resistant, so it's perfect for, for a topwater bait. And next we're gonna head out to the bandsaw and do a little bit of cutting. I think this is uh, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I don't think I need to explain too much. You just go ahead and uh, cut away. And try not to cut off your fingers. Anywho, um, I've been getting a lot of comments uh, recently regarding um, the popper video. Apparently it's become kind of popular uh, in the recent months been getting a lot of views and a lot of comments and a lot of the comments have been about me wearing gloves when I do the cutting which is apparently uh, a big no-no but you guys know I live in Canada right I mean it's freaking cold in here <laughs> during the winter time so I have to keep warm somehow so hence I'm wearing gloves thankfully it was really warm during this period when I was doing this top order bait so I didn't have to wear any gloves so lucky me now that I have the baits cut away from the red cedar blank, I can start sanding them down with my disc sander. Next I'm going to be marking out the center line, and this will help me align the stencil that I'm going to be using for the upper profile and also for the hardware and also where I need to drill the weight holes. Next up I'm going to be marking out the outlines for the upper profile to know where I need to cut. And this stencil was already made for this uh, project way 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 back, um, I've been using this for a long time already so... I know that it works. Um, from its thickest part, this one is 38.5 uh, millimeters thick, which means that this bait is going to be rather chunky, which is kind of what you want to have in a walk the dog type of bait anyways. Now, as this lure is still kind of in a blocky state, uh, it's always a good idea to make the eye socket holes, or in this case, the pilot holes for the eye sockets. And I'm just using this uh, stencil that I made for this uh, particular bait um, long, long, long ago and mark out where I need to drill the holes. And now we're back in the garage and I'm just going to be drilling some pilot holes for these baits. And I'm actually going to go all the way through the bait so that I have identical holes on each side. And now I'm gonna head out to the bandsaw and try not to cut off any of my fingers again and cut out the upper profile. And as you can see here, hopefully, I'm actually leaving a little bit of extra wood here so that I have something to sand later on.
In order to keep this project a little bit more rookie friendly, I decided to use screw eyes with this uh, particular uh, top water bait. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drill some pilot holes for the screw eyes. And I'm sure that there's few people out there who might have some concerns about the structural integrity of using screw eyes with uh, softwood like red cedar, which is a valid concern. Um, and obviously using uh, internal wire harness would be better. However, I, I think uh, if you use long enough screw eyes, it should be fine. And I've actually never had any of them pull out from the baits that I've made. Next I'm going to start shaping the bait and getting rid of uh, a lot of the mass here. And the shape that I'm trying to achieve here is kind of like an oval. I mean, not kind of, it is kind, it is an oval. Um, but yeah, I just I really enjoy this process. Uh, usually put on some music and uh, just whittle away. Now that I have the rough shape uh, done, I can start sanding everything nice and smooth. And at this point I would recommend for you to use some sort of mask uh, to prevent uh, any of the dust going into your lungs or your nose or anywhere else. Because honestly this is uh, pretty nasty stuff. And it's better to be safe than sorry. That's all I'm gonna say. Next I'm going to be drilling some eye socket holes and what I have here is something called a brad point uh, drill bit which means that it has a spike in the end which theoretically allows you to drill cleaner holes. But also since I made that uh, pilot hole that should help me with that issue too. Once the eye sockets were done I moved on to uh, basically gluing on the uh, hardware which means uh, the screw eyes. And I'm using um, a 37 millimeter, uh, pretty heavy duty uh, screw eyes for this one. And I'm just gonna glue them in with uh, five minute epoxy. All right, we're back in the garage now and I'm gonna be doing some lead melting now. And I just wanted to show you guys the setup that I have here. I have a hot plate that can do 1500 watts. That's usually enough for me to do any kind of melting even if it's really cold in the garage. And also I think it goes without saying that you have to wear a face mask when uh, melting lead. The fumes that uh, come out from it are poisonous to you and you want to make sure that you wear a face mask that can um, filter out organic vapors. Also, I have a window that is open right above my melting station here to have some ventilation going on. And also, wearing a pair of gloves is never a bad idea when handling lead. The mold for my lead melting is just a simple wooden mold that I've clamped together. I've drilled a hole in the middle and boom, I have a mold. Um, I've used this method for probably uh, 20 years or so, uh, probably ever since I started to make lures. I mean, it's kind of craptastic, but um, it works. Now that I have a whole bunch of these uh, lead pieces done, I'm just going to shave off a little bit of them to make them to be 20 grams. And I'm gonna have two of these in each lure, so that's gonna be 40 grams in total. All right, so next I'm gonna be drilling out the lead holes and uh, I'm gonna be doing two holes here. And as you can see here, I've marked um, with a piece of tape on the drill bit how deep I can go. Uh, this is just something I do pretty much every single time. Uh, it just helps me uh, keep an eye on the depth so that I don't go too deep. And now that I have all the holes done, I'm just going to fill them out with Bondo. And no, I'm still not gonna use uh, super glue and coke, I mean uh, baking soda to fill out the holes.
Before the Bondo has uh, cured completely and turned rock hard, I'm just going to shave off the excess material and uh, sand it after that. So now we're ready to seal the baits and I'm just going to use True Code Epoxy for this. Freeze the screen right now to see how it's spelled. Apparently uh, some people have a hard time understanding my accent, uh, judging from previous comments that I've been getting whenever I use this epoxy in the past. Uh, anyway, this is pretty straightforward uh, stuff. Uh, just follow the instructions that come in a bottle about the mixed ratio and um, you should be fine. As you guys saw in the intro, I've chosen a classic redhead color for this uh, painting portion of the video. And this color has been around for ages now, and for a good reason. It just flat out works. But I wanted to modernize this uh, classic color a little bit, and I'm going to be using various stencils to paint the uh, head details and the fins. But first I'm going to paint the scales. And what I have here is a custom made stencil for the scales. Uh, which I made uh, specifically for this uh, lure body. And what it is, it's just a piece of paper that I've drawn on the scales and then I've covered it with um, plastic tape on either side to make it a little bit more durable. And I'm just going to paint a layer of pearlescent white through it right now. And next we're gonna move on to red. And I'm just going to use this uh, custom made uh, stencil again, which I've shown how to make this in my previous video. Um, I think I'll link it into the description box again, so that uh, you guys who are curious about how to do those, uh, you can go ahead and check out that video. But yeah, honestly, I can't think of anything uh, interesting or insightful to say um, during this uh, painting process. So I think I'm just gonna leave some ambient sounds uh, going on in the background and uh, you can just watch uh, how I paint uh, without me actually explaining anything. I think it uh, should be pretty easy to follow e even if I don't uh, walk you through it, so to speak.
Alrighty, now that we've finished with the paint job, I'm just going to glue in some eyes with 5-minute epoxy. And then we're going to go to the drying rack and I'm going to um, cover these with epoxy again. And of course I'm just, just going to use uh, the True Coat epoxy again. I'm still on the opinion that it's probably the best epoxy for fishing lures that there's out there right now. Before I do the traditional swim test, I just wanted to show you guys some of the other lures that I've made during this session. And I think uh, some of them are actually kind of cool. I even uh, went out and made a uh, paint tutorial about the um, fire tiger that you see in this portion. So I think I'm probably going to actually have that as a Patreon exclusive. Um, haven't really decided yet, to be honest, but uh, we'll see. Alright, we're almost at the end here and it's time to do the traditional swim test. And I gotta say I had a lot of fun making this topwater lure. And I hope you guys enjoyed um, watching me do this uh, lure as well. So like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And also you can support me on Patreon nowadays too, if you want. I already have some ideas what I'm gonna do next, but um, I haven't really said on any specific uh, topic yet. But whatever it's gonna be, I'm sure it's gonna be awesome.